Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We have come rejoicing into the house of the Lord for this celebration, dear brothers and sisters. And now we stand with Kwong and Lauren on the day they intend to form a home of their own. For them, this is a moment of unique importance. So let us support them with our affection, with our friendship, and with our prayer as brothers and sisters. Let us listen attentively with them to the word that God speaks to us today. Then, with Holy Church, let us humbly pray to God the Father through our Lord Jesus Christ for this couple, for his servants, that he lovingly accept them and bless them and make them always one. Be attentive to our prayers, O Lord, and in your kindness pour out your grace on these your servants, Kwong and Lauren, that coming together before your altar they may be confirmed in love for one another through Christ our Lord. Amen. We invite you to be seated for the liturgy of the word. A reading from the book of Sirach. Bless the husband of a good wife. Twice lengthened are his days. A worthy wife brings joy to her husband. Peaceful and full is his life. A good wife is a generous gift bestowed upon him who fears the Lord. Be he rich or poor, his heart is content, and a smile is ever on his face. A gracious wife delights her husband, and her thoughtfulness puts flesh on his bones. A gift from the Lord is her governed speech, and her firm virtue is of surpassing worth. Choicest of blessings is a modest wife, priceless her chaste soul. A holy and decent woman adds grace upon grace. Indeed, no price is worthy of her temperate soul. Like the sun rising in the Lord's heavens, the beauty of a virtuous wife is the radiance of her home. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, we ought to put up with the failings of the weak and not to please ourselves. Let each of us please our neighbor for the good, for building up. For Christ did not please himself. May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to think in harmony with one another in keeping with Christ Jesus that with one accord you may, with one voice, glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome one another, then, as Christ welcomed you for the glory of God. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Word of the Lord. Some Pharisees approached Jesus and tested him, saying, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any cause whatever? He said in reply, Have you not read that from the beginning the Creator made them male and female, and said for this reason, A man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, man must not separate. 
The gospel of the Lord. We invite you to be seated. Today, you come to this altar to ask something of God. You've asked something of each other, and you each have responded in the affirmative. Yes, to the question. Now, for everyone here, how that question was posed is different. Perhaps some traditionally on one knee. Perhaps some jumping out of an airplane, which is happening right now as we speak, to another couple that I know. Perhaps it was over dinner. Or maybe in the quiet of a park, a beautiful place. But wherever the question was put forth, it doesn't really matter as much as the answer to the question. We both have said yes to one another. But today, you don't just say yes to one another, you say yes to God. We believe that God has a plan for everyone. Each and every one of us is beloved in the eye of our loving Creator, which the readings that you chose, along with Paul, beautifully reflect God's creation at work. God creates and brings life. When we listen to the Word of God, when we enter in to the Word of God, only life, only life issues forth life in the Spirit, that we might grow in our knowledge and love of God, and life in this physical sense, in the sense of building a home, which, as we welcomed you at the altar just a few moments ago, that beautiful introduction spoke of the family and the home that you build. But your yes to each other, and today the altar calls you to say that yes to God, it can't just be once. You can't say, remember when we said yes? Because you should say yes each and every day to one another and to God. If you begin every day saying yes to one another and to God, you will begin every day with the sunrise new and full of hope and promise. No matter how long the night might be, no matter how many storms might blow through, you will weather every one of them if you say yes to one another and yes to God with the sunrise of every new day. And so, I hope that that sunrise will be a constant reminder. I hope that that sunrise will be a reminder of your yes to each other and a yes to God. You each are talented, well-spoken, intelligent, hard-working, dedicated people. Bring those qualities to your yes every single day. Don't let your yes just be something that you say, words. Let them be something that become flesh within you. We heard in that beautiful gospel that you chose, the two shall become one flesh. At this altar, 
That's what we recognize Jesus does for us. He becomes flesh for us. That we might not just know about him, but encounter him. That we might not just think about him, but that we might touch him. In your married life, I wish you joy. What does joy mean? Here it is. J, Jesus first. Always Jesus first. O, others second. And Y, yourselves third. If you wake every day with the sunrise and say yes to God and one another, and if you hold joy, Jesus first, others second, and yourselves third, you will walk through every day more deeply in love at the end of that day. More complete witnesses to God's love. Because that's what your I do in just a few minutes says. Your I do says, I want to be a witness to a love that is stronger than death, that is greater than sickness, until death do us part. And even then, that love remains because it's anchored in Jesus. It's anchored in that one perfect sacrifice. And if you really want to be a husband and wife whose home and lives and hearts are filled with joy, Jesus first, others second, yourselves third, you'll recognize that love is not a commodity that is bought and sold. You can work an hour after hour after hour day and never have enough money to buy love. You can work late into the night or leave early in the morning and it's for nothing if it's not grounded first in the joy of Jesus first, others second, yourselves third, and the love of your home. That's called sacrifice. Love is not something we can buy and sell. It's not a commodity, as the world often says it is. It's not something that we ourselves create or define. It's not something that comes from us. It's something that we participate in. We look at the cross and we see that love is indeed sacrifice because that's the greatest image of love the world has ever known. One that says, I give myself completely. I hold nothing back. I pour myself out. And I do it not because you deserve it, but because I choose and I love you. That's what Jesus says on the cross. Say that to one another. At this altar and every day, and your work, and your life, and your home, and your hopes, and your dreams, and even your struggles, yeah, you've already had a few fights along the way, and that's okay, that's part of love, but you know how to forgive, you know how to communicate. That was a theme in our talks together was communication. But if you're not talking to God, talking to each other is not going to do a whole lot of good. So be sure that you talk to God and talk to one another both. Be sure that as you go forth, that that joy that fills your hearts and your home radiates. Because joy held is no good. Joy radiated is what transforms the world. Everybody here has been touched by your lives in some way or they wouldn't be here with you. People have traveled from Atlanta and all other places to be with you. Who traveled the furthest? Any idea who traveled the furthest? Anybody travel overseas to be here? No? Atlanta? Anybody travel further than Atlanta? How far did you travel? 30 minutes. D.C. So Atlanta and D.C. People have traveled a long way to be here with you, but they come because you've radiated and touched their lives in some way, and they want to be with you and share your joy this day. In just a minute, radiate that joy by the way you say what you're about to say. 
by the way you lay down your lives in each other's hands and together lay your lives down in his hands. And I promise you joy each and every day. Jesus first, in prayer and worship, in conversation, others second, and yourselves third. Don't work too hard, but work hard enough. Don't argue too much, but when you argue, be the first to forgive, the first to let down the wall, the first to open the door. Huang, I'm talking to you. And don't be afraid to speak, to share, and to open your hearts. Amen? Amen? Dearly beloved, you've come together in this house of the church so that in the presence of the church's minister in this community, you may enter into marriage and be strengthened with the sacramental seal. Christ abundantly blesses the love that binds you and through this special sacrament, he enriches and strengthens you. He's already consecrated you. Now may you be faithful to each other forever and assume all the responsibilities of married life. And so in the presence of the church, I ask you now to state your intentions. Kwong and Lauren, have you come here to enter into marriage without coercion, freely and wholeheartedly? Are you prepared to follow the path of marriage, to love and honor each other for as long as you both shall live? Are you prepared to accept children lovingly from God and to bring them up according to the law of Christ and his church. Since it's your intention to enter into the covenant of holy marriage, join now your right hands and declare your consent before God and his church. I, Kwong. I, Kwong. Take you, Lauren. Take you, Lauren. To be my wife. To be my wife. I promise to be faithful to you. I promise to be faithful to you. In good times and in bad. In good times and in bad. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love you and honor you. To love you and honor you. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. I, Lauren. I, Lauren. Take you, Kwong. Take you, Kwong. To be my husband. To be my husband. I promise to be faithful to you. I promise to be faithful to you. In good times and in bad. In good times and in bad. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love you and to honor you. To love you and to honor you. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. <coughs> May the Lord bless these rings, which you will give to each other as a sign of love and fidelity. Lauren, receive this ring as a sign of my love and fidelity. Kwong, receive this ring as a sign of my love and fidelity. God has joined, let no man put asunder. In the name of the 
the Father, and in the Son, and in the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you to turn and face me. And as we enter into the first moment of your life as husband and wife, it's fitting that we would offer our prayers. And as we offer prayers, we pray not just for the needs that you have, but for the needs of the church, the world, and those who we may not know but are connected to because of God's love. Is Lord, hear our prayer for leaders of the church and state, for heads of institution, for heads of homes and households, that they will lead us and guide us in search for God and the good life, in search for peace and joy, in search for love among us. Let us pray to the Lord. For all married people, for those married yesterday, for the new couple and married today, for those who will marry tomorrow, that they may savor the joy of being together. Warm love and children, a long life, wine, and friends, and a new day every day. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all young single people who look forward to a vocation full of life and full of love, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the lonely old and the lonely young, for the hungry rich and the hungry poor, for the sick in mind, body, and spirit, for weakness in all of us, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our for our relatives and friends who walk with us on life's journey, and for those who have gone before us to the other side of life, for the fulfillment of all their unfulfilled desires, let us pray to the Lord. These are our words of prayer today for ourselves and for all humanity. Tomorrow there will be others. Lord God, beloved of humankind, who first loved us, give our words the power of your word so that all things may be accomplished sweetly and gently for the happiness of all. We ask this through Christ our Lord. God the Father wills that his children be of one heart in charity. Let those who are Christian call upon him in the prayer of God's family, which our Lord Jesus Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Holy Father, maker of the whole world, who created man and woman in your own image, and will that their union be crowned with your blessing. We humbly beseech you for these, your servants, who are joined today in the sacrament of matrimony. May your abundant blessing, Lord, come down upon this bride, Lauren, and upon her companion for life, Kwong, and may the power of your Holy Spirit set their hearts aflame from on high, so that living out together the gift of matrimony, they may adorn their family with children and enrich the church. In happiness, may they praise you, O Lord. In sorrow, may they seek you out. May they have the joy of your presence to assist them in their work, in their toil, and know that you are near to comfort them in their need. Let them pray to you in the Holy Assembly and bear witness to you in the world. And after a happy old age, together with the circle of friends that surrounds them, may they come to the kingdom of heaven through Christ our Lord. I invite you all to stand. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. May God, the all-powerful Father, grant you his joy and bless you in your children. Amen. 
May the only begotten Son of God stand by with you in compassion, in good times, and in bad. Amen. May the Holy Spirit of God always pour forth his love into your hearts. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you who are gathered here, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. It is my special joy to present to you Mr. and Mrs. Shem. Woo!